Good afternoon. Yes, afternoon, beautiful people. I got here two beautiful machineries, aluminium Cannondale K12, full blown aerobike Cervelo S5. All right. So you may be wondering why they're here. They belong to two good mates of mine. Okay. They kind of use whatever they can use to intimidate me. Uh, still remain anomalous. Screw it! Mad Arthur, okay? He used his kindness to intimidate me. Yeah, hi mate, how's going, you know? Uh, how's things? Always nice to me. I know what's up. So, uh, he got this beautiful machine here, but uh, I think it's new bike. Um, it comes with, I don't know what this is, it looks really long. So, he's asking me to change to a slightly shorter stand. Look at this, look at this f full carbon split design stand. Beautiful, very smooth. Has all the um, stickers, pass quality control. So yeah, I'm gonna put this on, take that off, and also put two more spaces underneath it. So that's gonna shorten the reach um, and also rise the bar a little bit more, just to give a more comfortable position. It it totally makes sense though. If if you can't sustain in a very aero position for long, doesn't matter. You, you, this body is the main drag. So you gotta make yourself comfortable on the bike and hopefully let the bike do the rest. And now that bike belongs to Richard Link, another good mate of mine. He just pure intimidating. My FTP is 380 watts. If you wanna get into A grade, and you want my lead out, you're gonna fix my bike. I, I do want to get into A grade. Uh, and I do want a lead out, so I just suck it up. And... So I got a box of tubes, just came in today uh, from Wiggle. So basically, here's the thing. Tubeless is good. When it comes to gravel bike, off-road bikes, a hundred percent because you're going rough road you know cobbles rocks so you, you can't afford to bring a million tubes with you because you're gonna have a lot of pinch flats whereas on the road yes you do have pinch flat every now and then but the pavement just way smoother and it's more you can see what's on the road in a very controlled environment one problem with road bike setup tubeless is the tubeless tire is not that cheap and even though ceiling can save you from most little cuts but when the, the cuts is become a bit big it, it, even ceiling can't save you right so the problem with this the problem with this bike guys hey eh? The problem with this bike is the owner has too much power for this poor bike. <sighs> Look at the state of it. I, I can't just... It's so sad. You know, it's Jurais. 9,000. It, it's still working. But look at the state of it. <sighs> so, just take good care of your gear, please, guys. If you're that strong, maybe just jump on a Kmart bike. This, this, is, this is good stuff, mate. This is good stuff. Like if you're that strong, just don't do cycling. Maybe do, I don't know, uh, boxing. 
punch sandbags. You know, these these are high tech, dedicated stuff. All right, that's the problem with the guy is so powerful. So he took my advice, got some one of five instead G race, because you're not worthy. It looks like a simple job, but it's not. Uh, all the cables are internal. I pretty much have to rebuild the whole bike uh, to replace that. Um, it's not just a matter of unscrew, bang, new one in, screw back in. So it's a bit of a job. And, and, out of boredom, on Facebook, I bought a brand new set of, it's called a SRAM. Ravel uh, group set. The front rear derailleur is actually exact same um, road bike group set. It has flat shifters, so it will be pretty interesting to see which frame I'll be using for this project. Stay tuned. I think GCN actually um, done a video about. I think for the last Tour de France, this is the most expensive bike in the tour. My friend Romano, he bought a bike, he paid almost 20 grand late last year um, from Omar Cycles. So this is definitely a expensive machine. Now, but looking at the design, it's quite striking with split stem. Uh, so my thoughts on the bike i actually bought romano's bike and give it to my dad as a present it's about minus i don't know what's the degrees you got the snow outside it's raising but i'm going for a ride all the gear from my dad not the best fit at all but i get to ride the um Cervelo s5 ha so traditionally we have one stem to mount the bars and the Cervelo S5 you have this split design and then you have bolts underneath this that means the front end should be a little bit stiffer because the leverage is shortened instead of that much longer you see what I mean? Another really clever design is the steerer so so normally you have steerer here and then you bolt it on top to compress and tighten everything. But the problem is uh, if you buy a bike secondhand and the previous owner is more flexible than you, high chance they're gonna slam the stem and for the aesthetics, they're gonna chop the excess steerer to make it flash. And if you wanted to raise it up, you can't. You know, once you chop it, that's it. The way this bike design is, you can add more spaces, but you need a longer bolt. So I just remove these two rubber things. So the way the Svelo S5 design, the cockpit is these three bolts mounted the, the stem and the bars into the front fork, because this is one piece along with whatever spaces you wanted to get. So if you wanted to use more spaces, you just put a longer bolt. Brilliant. But obviously the downside is if you wanted to, like what my friend did, if you wanted a shorter stamp, you cannot use any other stamp or any other bars you have to buy from Cervelo. Calm your mind, calm your mind. <sighs> I get to this point, mate. Don't be a back mechanic. 
pay someone to do it. Calm your mind. Calm your mind. Thank you.